And um, we have the deputy party leader here. Your party leader is on record as saying that NASA is my brainchild and I am determined to ensure it remains intact. And NASA as an outfit, NASA as a coalition may be there on paper. But let's face it, uh, NASA as a force is no longer there. Well, just like all political parties, they never mobilize beyond the election time. And just like all political parties in Africa, they were formed on the eve of elections or at independence. And after independence, even some of them were killed. There were coups, counter coups. And subsequent to that, it is when there was clamor for the second liberation engendered by the Cold War collapse, the end of the Cold War, that political parties came again into action. In Africa, we do not have the culture of political parties. We pretend. These are vessels that we use them to win elections. Mm. And in between, they are not in existence. NASA, yes, may be a moribund idea as of now. But I'm very convinced if three parties pull out of NASA, other parties can come in and we can engage them on other terms. It is a brainchild of my party leader. Mm -hmm. I strongly believe NASA was something that was going to form as a coalition and subsequently for men into a political entity so that we have two or three political parties and is, in isn't Kenya. Isn't that uh, rather disappointing for Kenyans to know that as any other party, that NASA was also what they call an SPV special uh, uh, you know, political vehicle. vehicle, where once the elections are done, what happens to the things that NASA stood for? Graft, inclusivity, uh, electoral injustice. What happens to all those well, if... It's uh, only there for the, for the, for the <laughs> election time. And after that, then no, let's disband Michael, it. understand, I'm here on two, on, two, on two hearts. One, I'm the deputy party leader of ANC. Correct. And I'm also analyzing the situation insofar as Africa and Kenya is concerned, mm -hmm. as a scholar. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm giving you a scholarly advice that political parties in Africa are vehicles for purposes of winning elections. So after the elections, they, after the election, we, we, we are more have, in so, between. So can we then say that NASA is no longer no. in existence now that the elections it, are over? No, you see, you cannot use it just to selectively uh, pinpoint on NASA. Mm. I'm saying this period mm -hmm. is a more period. You don't hear a lot of jubilee parties unless they are in trouble. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, <laughs> in between, all these parties are more mm. They are in dormancy, and it's on the eve of elections that will also be able to chart the character of Jubilee, whether it is going to be split into URP and uh, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, TNA. Yes, yes. I've said it before, mm -hmm. that there is going to be a new configuration on the eve of the next on the election. Eve of the elections. Honorable Kembe Gitura, you agree that um, political parties are basically special purpose vehicles for elections, and after that, really, because that also speaks to the fact that they do not have um, ideology that drives them. Because we would imagine that even after elections, their ideology should remain intact, they should have causes that they are following after, and should not back down just by virtue of the fact that the elections are gone. You see, the trouble is um, um, that ideologies a lot of time come with strong personalities, and when those personalities are no longer there, they, they tend to be changed. The African National Congress of Nelson Mandela and uh, Sisulu and all those other, Sobuko and others that was there when they founded it in, uh, for so many years ago in South Africa has remained for quite some time. But if you look at the ANC now, you see it slowly disintegrating. Mm -hmm. You see that people have, some people have moved to other smaller parties. And uh, by the time we come to the next elections, we may find a lot of fractures uh, as tuition in South Africa. If you go to Chama Chama Pinduzi, in uh, Tanzan Tanzania, Tanganyika as it was then, and then Tanzania, the thinking of Julius Nyerere before independence was such that, was such that there should be no tribal parties, no tribalism, and he created a big party called Chama Chama, uh, the, the, the CCM. Is it CCM or Tanu? It was Tanu. It was Tanu. Yeah, before so, the yeah, with it, it was Tanu before yeah. they, they merged. Yeah. And it worked for a very long time until even the currently, you find that in Tanzania, it doesn't matter very much which tribe you come from to be elected a president. If you look at Kanu, coming away from Kau in Kenya to transforming to Kanu, again you find that it was a very large grassroots party. Because at the time we got independence, the issue of tribalism wasn't there. 
Yeah, it wasn't there. That is why you found Mze Raila saying that he's, you know, Mze uh, Jeremogi Oginga saying we are not going to form a government until Mze Kenyatta is out of detention. Mm. Because they are looking at one nation. But Kanu has continuously yeah, disintegrated. Mm -hmm. Sorry? Carry on. Kanu has continuously disintegrated because as we have moved on, the ideology that was there pre independence no longer, is no longer there. And we have moved more to a, frag a more fragmented country with, along tribal lines. Mm -hmm. So even NASA, what, what Kipruto Kirua is saying, yes, NASA, maybe the thinking was good. It was more like what Jubilee had thought when it brought all those small parties, parties to, together. together so that you could have a, a large movement. Mm -hmm. And maybe that is what should be sustained as much as possible. Is it going to happen? Or is it not going to happen? I think that is the question.